Greetings, adventurer. The days of long and tedious games are over. The new age of interactive tabletop terrain is here. And with this mighty staff, you too can wield the power of your terrain here with Terraintronics. Hey, look! A Dungeons and Dragons ride! Hello folks, with the advent of activities like escape rooms, open world video games and the resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons, I've been excited and encouraged to develop terrain that offers a truly interactive experience. I want to help you create experiences for your players that make them say wow, giving them an experience that feels like they're watching a magic show. And today's video is just the beginning. In this proof of concept, the Dungeon Master has the ability to flip all the lighting red when the players enter into combat, for instance, and to slide open a door when the puzzle is complete. To build this kind of project, we need a brain, an interface, a motor, a remote control, an IR receiver, addressable LEDs, and then some connectors and wire. Patience, Cavalier. All things have a purpose. In addition to the electronics, you'll also need access to some mechanical parts. Uh, either 3D printed or laser cut. All of these patterns are available on Thingiverse. Now for the electronics assembly. The Vimos D1 Mini sits at the bottom of the stack, and when you buy them they come with a bunch of connectors called headers. You normally decide which ones you want to use. I suggest you use the regular female connectors for the 8 pins on both sides of the board, so that the daughter cards with regular male pins can slot onto it. Acting as an interface or a bridge to the rest of the world is the Terraintronics Canadavon Castle board. It has the ability to drive three servo motors or doors, uh, use an external infrared receiver and communicate with addressable LEDs. These LEDs communicate in a daisy chain and providing they are hooked up correctly, the software takes care of it all. These connectors are used for our model. The servo is connected to this connector, the first LED is connected here, and then I cheat a little bit for the second LED and get its power from one of the empty motor connectors. Be sure to pay attention to which pin is ground and which is 5 volts. Also be sure to make sure your connectors are the right way around. There isn't much guidance, but I strongly suggest using the wiring code of green or black for ground and red for positive power. Your signal can be any colour you choose. So here we have the motor, but we need to make sure that this point here is rotated all the way back. And so and at which point, you know, we'll know if it's all the way turned, we can push this all the way and then mesh the gears in. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this to about here. And in the bag normally, there are some extra, what they call these horns. This is actually going to help you give you some leverage over the middle of the motor. So there we go. I'm just going to turn that in and I'm going to turn this until it can't go any further. And now I know that the motor is all the way turned around. So now I can push this over and know that if I put the gear here, it's turned all the way and the only way to go is this way, which will push the door sideways. Now this gear uh, is printed on my 3D printer. Uh, you know, every 3D printer has slightly different tolerance. So what I found is that getting this to attach to the motor is quite difficult because the diameter of this hole isn't quite big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of ream it out a little bit. This is a 4.8 millimeter uh, drill bit. So again, I'm going to pull this over as far as I can and slide this on. So you can see the motor is now on and because this isn't wired, let's just do a quick test. There we go. Okay, so for this door, right, it's going to open back and forth like this. And so what we want is to attach a door here. I have some foam board by here. Got blade. Attach that to there. And my suggestion is that you just take this up a hair just a little bit, so that the door doesn't scratch along the floor. Alright, so we don't want it too far ahead, we want it flush with the front. I'm going to glue it on like that, and with the glue dry on the door, you can now see how this mechanism works up close in person. There the door would be closing, and there it would be opening. Once you've assembled, 
your Canal von Castle board, you'll see three strips of headers down on the left hand side here. These are your servo connectors and they are pinned as the signal to the servo, the power to the servo and ground and that's even written on in very small white writing on the board. Now most servos are already wired, uh, in this case we have brown for ground, uh, power which is red and orange that is signal and all I'm going to do here is plug that straight on the board. Alright, these are some of the NeoPixels that we've spoken about. To wire these into the system is quite easy, breaking one off, I'm going to have 5 volt pass through, ground pass through and then data in comes here and data out goes there. And to do that I'm going to use some of my wire wrapping wire and the reason I like this is that it's very very thin and very very easy to hide in your terrain. This stuff is dirt cheap and so I recommend just buying a reel for about $10 from Amazon. Links below. I want to not lose it. I just use a, a bulldog clip. And that's it. This is going to be just a, a demo version so I'm going to put a little bit of wire on the 5 volt between here and here, a little bit of ground here and then from this side over is going to be my long piece of wire that goes off to the uh, Cadenard von Castle board. All I'm doing here is putting just some solder down so that when I come into it with a wire and the soldering iron later it's nice and easy to solder with. In this example I'm daisy chaining the power, uh, 5 volt and ground, through the boards. However, in my actual implementation I ended up taking a separate 5 volt and ground from my Canarvon board. It doesn't really make that much difference. So here we have a Canarvon board and these are the two NeoPixels that we're going to use. Now I've already soldered them together. So we've got you know, power coming in, 5 volt here, comes out this pad over to here. We've got data that comes in here, goes through the chip, then comes out in a daisy chain style onto the next one. And if I wanted to add further LEDs, I can do so. Now on the other end of these, I have crimped the ends. And these crimp cables are designed to go into a JST-XH connector. Now the JST-XH is about 2.5 millimeter pitch. Pitch means the distance between the pins. And they match up quite nicely to the standard pin headers that we have here on the Kandar von Castle board. Guys, future David here from the editing room. I realized I didn't show you how to do any crimping in any way, but I've now published a video that shows you how. Click on here to see that. In the meantime, go back to the video. The pinout for these, meaning what the pins are, is written here and it says 5 volts data and ground. So 5 volts data and ground. So what I'm going to do is if I put in my connector like this onto the board I'm going to put on the 5 volts first. There's a little tab at the top right there that's going to slot in and catch behind this bit of plastic and now I can't pull the connector out. So that's the first one. That was power for 5 volts. And if I can't slide it all the way I can use a screwdriver just to nudge it along and we'll soon see look can't take that out and finally time for the last crimp give that a little pull and that's it now we've got all three cables in there so we now have two of the neopixels wired with ground data and power and this connector here which is now uh, ground data and power and i'm going to connect that directly into my canaron castle board now then, let's see what happens when we plug power into it. This is just a USB power bank I'm using. Just like that, we have yellow light. Beautiful, that's our flickering candle effect that we're going to use. And once you're done, you should be able to connect your Canadavon board to the top of your Wemos D1 mini board, then finally a motor, LED number one, LED number two, and finally your IR receiver. Make sure your IR receiver is somewhere on the terrain where it can see the remote control. Connecting your Wemos D1 Mini to your computer has been covered in this video right here. Now once you've ensured that you've actually got a connection and that it's coming up as a serial port then download the tool that's in our GitHub. Once you've downloaded the Terraintronics download tool over here you're going to drop down the port selection tool and you should see 
if you've installed the driver for the Wiimos D1 Mini properly, a CH340 driver. You're going to click on that, select a board rate of uh, 115,200 and then click OK. Alright, now we're going to go to firmware update and you're going to download the file from this demo door and lights folder on GitHub. Uh, there'll be a link below in the description. Uh, you want to download the bin file. Okay, and once you've downloaded that bin file, you're going to browse for it. You're going to select it and hit upload. It's going to ask you, do you want to upload it on COM10? Uh, make sure it's on ESP8266 and then press OK. And then you'll see it upload. With that, you should see at the bottom here, Terraintronics demo, sliding door with NeoPixels and remote control. And with the hardware and software all done, it's time to have a quick look at the demo really working. Remote control, over lighting and doors and so on all becomes possible. So you watch the video and you're wondering what to do next. First things first, look in the description to this video to find all the ingredients that we use to make this proof of concept. Then head on over to terraintronics.com and look for the Kynarvon Castle board. For a short time there will be a complete kit of parts including the 3D printed items that you can buy. All the documentation include links to Amazon shopping lists that are available from the GitHub page, links in the description for this video. The 3D printed parts are also on thingiverse.com as well. Using these kits of parts will allow you to move quickly and spend more of your time with foam and paint and ultimately mesmerizing the players in your D&D party. Thanks again for tuning in today. Please like and comment on what you've seen and any ideas you have to improve this proof of concept or ways to make it easier for people to make. Then subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about any new videos that are uploaded. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing how we can make more of our dungeon terrain challenging interesting and interactive. Stay safe folks and keep on making. Thanks again. You have won for now, but I shall win in the end. <laughs>